oh, you've got the wrong turn signal. That's gonna cost you five conquerors points. Uh. Welcome to Dirt Sweat and Gears, your warehouse of weird wheels. We are here with my 1989 Honda Prelude project, and hopefully you're not too sick of this car because we're just getting to the exciting part. If you're not familiar with this project, I bought this car for 750 bucks, thinking it was a salvage title and I was going to part it out and use those parts for my daily Honda Prelude. It turned out to be a clean title and a very clean car overall, so I have since been working to bring this car back to life and hopefully sell it to somebody who will appreciate it and who will take it to car shows and who is going to just have a lot of fun with it. Now, on the last video, we made some really exciting progress. Finish up the clutch job, everything got back together, the car was on the ground, and the clutch works, the car moves back and forth, but we noticed a few more problems. The previous owner had put block sealer in the radiator system, which is a really bad idea. Um, in general, if you feel like putting block sealer in your car is going to fix the problem in your car, um, you should just fix the problem with the car because block sealer isn't gonna do it. And so far we've kind of seen that this thing kind of wrecked havoc in the entire system because it wasn't properly flushed after it had been poured in. So we noticed it in the radiator, we noticed it in the hoses, and we also noticed it in the thermostat housing where it came out in like a thick goop. Uh, we also saw it in the water pump, all the signs were there. But another really concerning thing was uh, when we were doing our test fire, I had the heater on, uh, the engine came up a little bit to temperature and and the heater wasn't getting hot. So in this video, we have to do some more diagnostics. Um, I ordered a radiator, so we're gonna probably do that on this video as well. And we're gonna try to figure out what else is wrong with this car so that we can try to get it mechanically sorted, completely mechanically sorted. If things are going really well, that may even include the air conditioning system. But one step at a time, let's first get this thing up on jack stands Let's try to put some flush in the radiator system because I already know I have to replace the radiator anyway. Putting a flush in there, uh, the flush chemical, isn't gonna do a whole lot of harm. Somebody gifted me something and it's very, very cool. I have center caps on all four wheels now. This is amazing. Thank you so much to Todd from the Third Gen Prelude Enthusiast Group on Facebook. This is an incredible gift, and I am very, very grateful. Um, the, these are not the easiest thing to find, and when you do, people usually price gouge you. So um, this is just amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, you can see there's some scratches, and the paint doesn't match up, but uh, clearly I have some paint matching issues to work through already, so I can address it at that time. Um, these are going to look amazing on this car. This, this is this is so so cool. This isn't something that I typically do, but considering the heater core is clogged anyway, I want to try to unclog it without having to replace it because having to replace it means removing the entire dash. And so if there is a snowball's chance in hell of the heater core being unclogged, it's going to be done with this radiator flush. I may as well try it. We know the radiator's hosed anyway, and it's gonna be a week before the radiator comes in in order to be able to replace it. So we've got plenty of time to kill. Let's try to kill it with some radiator flush. I'll check in with you once this needle starts to rise. All right, this is the surging idle that I was talking about. It's just gonna keep doing this forever. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Okay, so to fix this, you just gotta crack this nut here. Wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? I'm losing oil. Oh no! Look at this. This is power steering fluid. This line has to go. 
Oh man, that sucks. That line is really hard to replace. All right, let's press on. That's another issue for another day. Man. Okay, so to resolve this surging idle, usually all you have to do is crack this bleeder valve. You do that, you open it up until water starts to come out. You can see steam is coming out right now. There we go. All right, we're gonna close this for real quick. We're gonna top off the water, then we'll bleed it again if we have to. And so if you're using coolant, you'll want to run a hose back in to the radiator so that you're not spilling coolant all over everything. This could be really, really bad. Oh, the heater's getting hot. Yes, 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 something good happened. So ambient temperature, 62 degrees. Temperature in the car, 137 coming out of the vent. So yeah, this is blowing nice and hot. I'm very, very relieved because removing a heater core is a massive, massive undertaking. Okay, before we jump to conclusions and start making assumptions about what happened to this car, we're gonna test the block. The surging idle could be caused by um, crap in the intake system, which would mean that I need to take apart and rebuild the intake system. That's not the biggest problem in the world. A head gasket would suck because it means I have to redo a lot of work that I already did. So we're going to use the block tester. The idea here is that it sniffs the gases that are in the radiator and it will change color if the head gasket is blown. You don't want to take in coolant, so I might need to bleed a little bit out. So, I don't think we have a blown head gasket. Oh my God. It's leveling out. I started pouring more of the coolant in there. And you can see it's bubbling over now, but it's leveling out. My God. This is, this is very, very good news. If all I have to do now is replace the high pressure power steering light and the radiator. Today is a great day. Replacing the high pressure power steering line is gonna suck. Uh, this is actually the first thing I've ever done on a Prelude or on any car. Because when I got this, right around 130,000 miles, I had the same problem. And um, this is actually the very first thing that I did when I worked at Jason's Automotive Specialty back in Oh God, it had to have been year 2002, something like that, uh, where I worked for that shop. Um, I learned so much there, mainly that this is a very difficult job, um, but it's doable. If I can do it at 16 years old, I can do it at 39 years old. I'm too old. We're gonna go ahead and fix this taillight problem. Uh, we got this part here. You can see the part number 46505SA5000. These are uh, just little rubber, or they're not even rubber, they're plastic stoppers for the brake and the clutch. So this is a very common thing, and it will drain your battery pretty quickly, and I don't know why a lot of people don't seem to know about it, but they even sell these things at the hardware store, or the auto parts store. What did I just pull? F*** me. Yep, that was a Speedo cable. I pulled the speedo cable out. That's fun. I'm gonna have a great time reconnecting that. And now the brake lights are no longer always on. I installed the turn signals. I had most of a set of 
uh, 89SI turn signals, but uh, clearly I was missing one. I have what appears to be an 88 or an S model. I am on the hunt for the correct turn signal corner, but in the meantime, this will get me DOT legal. It means I can drive this thing on the road. As you can see here, I've been trying to find turn signals. I've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different <laughs> turn signal lenses, and the lettering is down here on this side. So this is a driver's side. This is a driver's side. This is the wrong one, and it's also a driver's side. This is a passenger side, but it's also the wrong one. And these are all the uh, center pieces, center sections. So I've got uh, 88, 89, 89, 89. So I've got quite a few turn signals. If you need a turn signal lens, let me know because I'll hook you up, especially if you've got one to trade for me. There's one more thing I wanna do before we pull this thing out of the garage. I tried to match up this hose, but unfortunately I got the wrong size. However, this size is an exact match for fixing the uh, windshield squirters. So you see here, we've got this little uh, broken piece here. Uh, this hood squirter bar was on my car. Uh, I got a better one for my car, so I decided to replace this one because the one on this car was way warped. So you can see this is terrible. Uh, this is a huge upgrade and that's going in the trash. So it, you know, it's not perfect, but it's so much better and it has all the clips and it just has this little broken thing here that we have to replace. And then we can run a new line out to the uh, squirter main line that is hanging off of the hood there. Did you ever wanted to push rope? It's like, I don't, want, I don't even want to tell you what it's like. It's like when you've had a few too many drinks. That's what it's like. If I need to explain that to you, then I'm not going to explain that to you. And if you know what I mean, you don't need me to explain it to you. What could go wrong? All right, so that's gonna be good enough. Uh, that will tuck in underneath the squirter bar. It's gonna, yeah, that's gonna work. Awesome. So let's get this thing routed through the car and then we'll be able to connect it to the other side. So the thing to know about these clips is that they shift back and forth. So now I have to shift all of these clips into place in order to get this bar settled on the hood before I go screwing it in. Yeah, there we go. Boom. We are in good shape. Yeah, that's as good as you can ask. So the radiator and the power steering line have arrived, uh, but since we're running low on daylight, we're gonna tackle the radiator first because that is gonna go a lot quicker. The power steering line, I am gonna need an entire day for that because I know that's gonna piss me off. So this is an OE style radiator. You see it's got the plastic tank, the aluminum core. It is exactly what we're expecting from a radiator for this car. Uh, very straightforward. And it's got all the little things here that we're gonna have to reconfigure. Um, this is like the sensor port. Uh, this is if you have an automatic, uh, we cap these off. Uh, all of that is on the existing radiator and we just transfer it right over, including the, hopefully, the uh, drain plug. Hopefully we can transfer that over because that one's way better. Let's get the old one out so that we can make room for the new one.
this wiring harness. This connects to the engine harness, the main harness. This has nothing to do with the radiator assembly. Why is it bolted into the cooling fan? It has nothing to do with the fans. This is the harness that runs to the AC compressor. Th there was no reason for that. That was really, really stupid. Uh, but stupidity aside, we've removed the old radiator. So now we need to transfer over all of the stupid little bolts, brackets, and sensors from the old radiator and make sure that we don't miss anything because if we miss something, we're not getting it back. So I went ahead and bought replacement bolts uh, that were longer to fit inside these clips. And I also uh, replaced this little patch of tubing here. I could fill this radiator with coolant, but I think I wanna just wait until I do the power steering line. So the power steering, uh, there's this little cover that comes off at the bottom. There's three 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on. It covers this thing. This one here is the power steering line that you need to remove uh, for the high pressure. It's a 14 millimeter. I highly recommend using one of these 14 millimeters and not just anyone. Uh, this is one of those rare times where you definitely want a good name brand because you don't want to mess around with the AutoZone brand. You don't want to mess around with the Cheap Harbor Freight brands. And the reason I say that is because when you use uh, a cheaper metal, a uh, cheaper wrench, uh, as you apply torque to this thing, you're going to see it start to flex. You do not want this thing rounding off these bolts. So you absolutely need something that is extra hard. You need something that is very, very good. Uh, this is one of those very rare times that I bought Snap-on. You do not want these things stripping out. It will seriously mess up your day. So now that the thing is off and it's draining a gallon of fluid, uh, the next step we want to address the speed sensor. And there's also a bracket down here. Uh, you can kind of see everything on camera here. Uh, the bracket that we need to release is here, and this is the speed sensor. You follow this speed sensor up to wires at the top of your engine compartment. That's the easy part. Let's go take a look. So this is uh, the wire to the speed sensor. Yellow connects to green for some reason, uh, but this one snaps into this little uh, slot here as well. So uh, there's also a little clip, but this little clip was disconnected uh, on my car and they frequently break. So it's probably broken for you as well. And uh, once this is loose, just leave it. Uh, don't, don't try to remove it from its location there. Uh, the, the hard part is going to be that bracket that I showed you. The bolt for that bracket, I don't honestly don't even know if I'm gonna be able to show you on camera, um, but it's in the shot. Believe it or not, it's in the shot. Uh, no, that was, I, I, I don't know what I just removed, but I removed something that did not need to be removed. Oh, for God's sake. It seems that I removed the bolt 
next to the bolt that I intended to remove. Well, it's out. Not getting it back in that way, that's for sure. That was some bullshit. I think I remember what I did 20 years ago when I replaced this on my car. Uh, I did the exact same thing. I got really pissed off and bent the thing straight as an arrow. Let's take a look at some of the worst parts about this job. Uh, first of all, there's this bracket. That bracket screws into the subframe. That's really hard to reach that bolt. Very, very hard. These two on the back of the motor, uh, they clamp uh, attached to the back of the intake manifold. The bolts are not hard to reach, uh, so those are fine. And then we got the lap around the distributor. That really sucks because it gets really tight underneath the distributor. Inside the engine bay, we're gonna, we're gonna save the best part for last. Oh, we're saving the best part for last. Inside the engine bay, you have to take apart the entire intake system. Uh, you have to take out at least that. You might not have to take out the uh, intake box or the filter, um, but I recommend taking out the filter, even though every time you remove the filter, you get the filter more dirty. But take that thing out, make some room for yourself, detach all of these because you're gonna pull on them and uh, you could rip them. Uh, you see, I definitely pulled on the fuel hose. Uh, that's pretty strong though, I'm not worried about that. Um, in here, we've got, you gotta be careful of all of these stupid connectors, all of these brackets, all the things. Uh, but the worst part, the worst part about this job, and probably, arguably, the worst part about this entire engine bay, is this stupid resonator back here. This one that is rattling, that I'm wiggling, that is really, really, really stupid. Uh, you cannot remove that without removing the intake manifold. That, in my opinion, is the worst part of the entire car. It takes up a lot of space. It's impossible to get to the mounting uh, bolts, and it gets in the way of everything. The problem is there's a little foot down there, and that little foot, um, when it's mounted, is underneath the power steering line. But in order to remove the power steering line, it needs to be over the power steering line. So you need to lift this up while you're maneuvering the power steering line round and underneath it so that it can make a lap underneath that foot and around the subframe. I went back to the zone and they did have an O-ring, but it came in a pack with 17 other O-rings. So of course it cost me $10 to have this one O-ring. Let's put this thing in the new line and get this new line in the car. That's the only thing I'm gonna try to do for the day because I know this is gonna piss me off. Pretty pissed off. So at the surface level, it looks like I'm very close to being done. But in reality, I still have to take apart half my car. Uh, I gotta take out the sway bar and the exhaust downpipe because uh, that's the only way it's gonna happen from this angle. It's the only way. It's the only way. So if you can do this job without getting really pissed off, you are a better man than me. Uh, so I've removed the sway bar and I've disconnected the downpipe from the catalytic converter. I don't think I need to drop the entire downpipe. I just needed to be able to get this line through without straightening it out. Uh, this is, I'm gonna try to work with this. Um, I can't make any guarantees, but I'm gonna try. <sighs> Ow. Oh, that's big. Oh, do not die on me, light. 
No. Oh, this stupid intake box. This is the worst fucking part on this car. Get that might have been good. Okay. Things are moving around a little more easily. That stupid thing. Now I need to get it around the foot of the intake box. Good luck. Oh my god. I think I'm close. I think I'm close. I think I'm close. Does this go here or here? Ah, I think you got it. My little Cirque du Soleil stunt worked out a little bit. I was able to free up the line and uh, get it past the steering shaft. And then I went back underneath and I had to uh, figure out how to get the line underneath the foot of the intake box because the intake box just blocks everything that you want to do back here for any reason whatsoever. I ended up reaching my arm here around the front of the subframe and I was able to lift up the steering box and then grab the power steering line and pull it under. That got me to where we're at now, which is actually very, very close. Down here, I've got the power steering lines reconnected. Everything is all run nicely. Well, I wouldn't say nicely. It was, it was a pretty violent process. You can see down there, I still have to retrieve the, uh, uh, the switch plug, run it up here. Hopefully I didn't damage the wires. I know I pushed on them a little bit and pulled on them a little bit, but I don't think I damaged them. Uh, I got the line ran where it's supposed to be run. Uh, there's a lot of things left to do. There's a lot of things left to do, but the hardest part is done. I can relax a little bit. Uh, the next stressful thing that is coming up is going to be remounting that stupid intake box. You see here, um, this is the heat shielding that comes with the AutoZone uh, uh, hose. I retrieved this uh, piece off of the original line. I'm just gonna slip it on here, zip tie it down, just so that it looks a little bit better. It looks a little less tacky. Looks a little more OEM, even though we're definitely not OEM as evidence by the 16 millimeter flare nut that I had to put into the rack. Yes, it's a 16 millimeter because... Get in the zone! Auto zone. Well, this is not a show car, but this is reasonable and it looks good. Um, I still need to do a lot of cleanup. There's a couple of things left to put on, obviously some of the plumbing there and a couple of these brackets. This bracket and that cover need to go back on. I also need a new radiator cap because this radiator cap is a different size. Good job, AutoZone. Good job. Get in the zone. The original line was quite a bit fatter. It had like a, it, an insulating sleeve around this length of tubing. So I went ahead and just wrapped it with electrical tape so that uh, these brackets would grab a little bit better. Uh, this piece of rubber is also from the old line. I had to cut it, uh, so I just slipped it on, and then uh, it's held on with uh, zip ties. I also reconnected the uh, sensor thing here, and back here I have set the line in the little brackets as good as it'll hold. Again, the original line comes with uh, rubber grommets that are built into it. Those will not fit on here. What I'm doing right now is overkill for getting the job done. If all I wanted to do was get the job done, this would just look ugly and we would deal with it. But I want it to look a little bit better than good enough. So after installing the new radiator that I got from AutoZone, naturally I had to get a new radiator cap, seeing as how this cap is not the same size. So I went to AutoZone, the same place that I bought the radiator from, and I went to get a cap for it. And they gave me this. It's a mission moto, which is kind of cool, but let's just kind of try to put this, we're gonna put this, the, um, Get in the zone. Auto zone. You know what? I'm just gonna use the one off the Miata because the one off the Miata fits. Look at that. Perfect. Well, since we got a radiator cap figured out, at least a temporary solution, uh, we can go ahead and fill this thing with coolant. We're also gonna fill this with power steering fluid since we're done with that job as well. And then we're gonna give this a little test. 
So the radiator is full and the power steering fluid is at maximum. Um, there's going to be some pull through. I'm going to have to refill, especially the power steering. Um, I may have to crack the bleeder valve on the radiator, but uh, we don't know for sure because there's plenty of water in the system as it is. <sighs> Uh, we're still smoking from all of the coolant that poured all over everything. But, so far, this car might be done pissing me off. Hey, the fan came on. You see it running right now. That's the primary radiator fan. That's supposed to come on at, uh, I think, 190 degrees, 195 or something like that. Yeah. See, it's 187 so yeah, the fan works as expected. That's great. It's idling high. Probably um, the idle screw needs to be adjusted. All right, we got the car back on the ground. Everything is back together uh, with the exception of the splash guard. I'm still working on copying that for my other Prelude. Uh, let's start this thing up. I wanna pull it out of the garage and have it sit outside for a little bit. And one of the other things that uh, I'm kind of concerned about uh, is the clunking noise that I heard earlier. Um, however, when I was uh, installing the power steering line, I had to drop the sway bar. And when I was doing that, I noticed the right side wasn't very tight. So it very well could have been the sway bar banging around that I was hearing. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to... Uh, we're just going to drive it down the driveway. We'll know. Wow, the clutch feels really good. Oh, it feels really good. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I am so excited to have this car outside again for the first time in months. And not only that, but it runs, it drives, the clutch feels amazing. I fixed all the power steering issues and we cleared up the heater problem. The next thing I have on order is shocks for this whole car because I did hear that noise while I was pulling out of the garage. It sounded like it was a, it was a bad shock noise. Um, it, shocks typically make like a little clunking noise. So I just went ahead and ordered all four because, well, this car could probably benefit from it and this will be just an amazing driving car once I get the shock switched out. And so despite all of the not so little issues that came up and the undisclosed problems on this car, I uh, was, I'm really happy to say that I was able to get through it. Um, this is gonna be an incredible car when it's done. The reality of it is that there may still be a lot to do uh, between the shocks, the alignment, the smog. The smog check is really going to be the big test because um, anything could happen when you're smoggy. It, the, the catalytic converter could be fouled. Um, there could be some other issue that is affecting smog. It could, the EGR could be clogged. There's a whole lot of things that could go wrong and you don't know until you get this car on that dyno. So um, I'm really excited and really nervous to get to that point because excited because uh, we've come a long way. I've come to the point where I can now actually drive this car, but nervous because we may not be done. Well, that's it for this video. If you like what you see, like, share, subscribe, and comment. And if you don't like what you see, leave a comment anyway. I'll see you in the next video.